So how can your cell phone and your television work at the same time? Both use antennas to receive information from electromagnetic waves, so why isn't there a problem? The answer goes back to the fundamental secret of the universe. No matter what information you want to send, the waveform can be represented as the sum of a range of frequencies. By the use of modulation, which in a nutshell shifts the frequency range of the waveform to be sent to a higher frequency band, the waveforms can be relocated to separate frequency bands. As an example, cell phones that use the personal communications service band have their signals shifted between 1850 and 1900 MHz. Television is broadcast primarily at 54 and 216 MHz, while FM radio operates between 87.5 and 108 MHz. The set of all frequencies is referred to as the spectrum. Alright, so what we see here is a spectrum which tells us which equipment uses which band of frequency. As you can see, the frequency starts from 3 kHz all the way up to 300 GHz. Also, you can notice that lower frequencies have much longer wavelength than the signals of higher frequencies. So remember that wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. As the signal frequency increases, its wavelength decreases. The first band of frequency is called very low frequency, which starts from 3 kHz and ends at 30 kHz and corresponds to a wavelength from 100 to 10 km respectively. Due to its limited bandwidth, audio voice transmission for example is highly impractical in this band and therefore only low data rate coded signals are used. This band is used for a few radio navigation services, government's time radio stations like for example broadcasting time signals to set radio clocks and for secure military communication. Since very low frequency waves can generate at least uh, 40 meters into salt water, they are used for military communication with submarines. Low frequency signals in the range of 30 kHz to 300 kHz exhibit low signal attenuation, making them suitable for long distance communications. Its main use is for aircraft beacon, navigation, information, and weather systems. Because of their long wavelength, low frequency radio waves can diffract over obstacles like mountain ranges and travel beyond the horizon following the contour of the Earth. Now, medium frequency band can be found in the range of 300 kHz to 3 MHz. This band is mostly used for AM radio broadcasting, navigational radio beacons, maritime ship-to-shore communication, and transoceanic air traffic control. The high frequency band is used by international shortwave broadcasting stations, aviation communication, government time stations, weather stations, and citizens' band services. Common uses for radio waves in the very high frequency band are FM radio broadcasting and television broadcasting. Within 300 MHz and 3 GHz, which is the ultra high frequency band, this band is used for television broadcasting too, cell phones, satellite communication including GPS, personal radio services including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, walkie-talkies, cordless phones and numerous other applications. Cell phone companies have to pay big money to get access to part of the spectrum. For instance, AT&T has to bid on a slice of the spectrum with the FCC for the right to transmit information within that band. The bandwidth of a signal is the difference between the signal's high and low frequencies. For instance, a signal transmitting between 40 and 50 MHz has a bandwidth of 10 MHz, right? This means that the energy of the signal is contained between 40 and 50 MHz and the energy in any other frequency range is negligible. 
we will wrap up the course with a table of frequency bands along with the corresponding wavelength. From the table, we see that very high frequency is in the range of 30 and 300 MHz, and at the very least then if someone says they need a very high frequency antenna, you should now understand that the antenna should transmit or receive electromagnetic waves that have a frequency between 30 and 300 MHz.